Justice Clarence Thomas is facing new heat over this widening ethics scandal. ProPublica exposed that Thomas has this close secret relationship with a super donor, a Republican official, kind of big, big guy in the party, the billionaire Harlan Crow. Now there's heat on the Supreme Court to do more. That report detailing lavish vacations that Crow basically gifted to Thomas, who many are calling a grifter now, to the tune of millions of dollars over the total amount. They cruised the globe on Crow's super yacht. The justice also made regular use, according to the reports, of the billionaire's private jet for free. And every summer, Thomas and his family have been staying at the billionaire's resort rent-free. All of that brings Thomas into socializing with corporate executives, political activists, and others with business before the court, potentially, or interests before the court. Now, Thomas says they are just dear friends. Of course, their friendship has coincided with his power on the Supreme Court. They didn't grow up together. By accepting these gifts, by grifting off someone so clearly pushing an agenda, this lifetime member of the Supreme Court has called his own judgment into question, his own ethics and honesty into question. These are the lodestars of any good judge, let alone a Supreme Court justice. There aren't many solutions here because justices are supposed to police themselves. That's why they're the highest court in the land. They don't have a court above them about any of this stuff, including their gifts or recusal. Some say it's time to impeach Clarence Thomas. I know that there are calls for Chief Justice to, for the Chief Justice Roberts to initiate an investigation. I do not think that uh, this court any longer has the legitimacy. It is the House's responsibility to well, pursue that investigation in the form of impeachment. That is one approach. It is a very grave measure to impeach any judge, let alone a sitting Supreme Court justice. As for Clarence Thomas, well, he has found himself very exposed here. He was not being honest or transparent about this. His defense spins this as if it's some buddy, when in fact it's quite clear that the relationship these two have is forged through Thomas's power. Everyone can see that. And other statements Thomas has made that might have seemed normal at the time are called into question where it looks like he has been misleading the public about how he actually likes to spend his time and grift off billionaires for luxury trips. I prefer the RV parks. I prefer the Walmart parking lots to the beaches and things like that. There's something normal to me about it. I come from regular stock, and I prefer that. I prefer being around that. This is the sound of the largest legal eye roll in America. Why would he be talking like a politician? Why would he be pushing this cover story? Why is it even necessary? He has that rare thing in government, lifetime tenure, and now he has an example of why so many people think those antiquated rules may also somehow need to evolve. Why, Justice Thomas, were you misleading the public about how you liked a vacation? Why even bother? Because you clearly don't like normal. Now, the justice has generally been a kind of an unusual presence on the court. He's known for his ideological extremism, for not usually posing questions from the bench. Here he was, though, after the leak of the Dobbs decision to overturn Roe. You can't have a, a, a civil society, a free society, without a stable legal system. And when you lose that trust, especially in the institution that I'm in, uh, it changes the institution fundamentally. I wonder how long we're going to have uh, these institutions at the rate we're undermining them. And uh, then I wonder when they're gone or they are destabilized, what we will have as a country. Justice Thomas sounded so strong because he was making those statements as an accusation in judgment of others, judgment being his day job. But he now stands accused of the very things he was voicing there, undermining the trust in this institution. Just to put it plainly tonight, let's remember, if you're scheduled to be executed in America, you have your appeals, and then your appeals go all the way up to the Supreme Court. And those people we just showed you, Thomas, among them, they decide whether there's any grounds to review your case or not, whether you live or die. That is the level of power they wield. So when they talk about the trust declining over the leak of a case, or in Mr. Thomas's, Justice Thomas's position tonight over accepting millions of dollars and hiding it. Yes, it's about trust, and it's about a lot more than trust. It's about the power they wield over other people's lives. 
Mr. Crow may be a dear friend of Justice Thomas. I want to note that he said he was advised that the personal hospitality from personal friends with no business for the court was not reportable. Meanwhile, the Washingtonian has a report that has resurfaced about this Mr. Crow character and how he collects Hitler artifacts, including two Hitler paintings, Nazi memorabilia, statues of dictators. An older report reveals, and they haven't denied it this week, that Crow has a copy of the infamous Hitler book, Mein Kampf, signed by Adolf Hitler. Crow's only public denial about any of this, excuse me, not denial, his only public statement about this was that he viewed this not as a celebration, but a way to preserve part of our history. This story was a scandal before you brought in the signed Hitler book and the Nazi memorabilia. But there we are. As Justice Thomas said, what will happen when the Supreme Court has no trust?